All right, so we're going to continue on with the oval window. I want to show you something first. You guys remember I was using my used stripper, orange citrus strip. And it stripped off. Look how much came off with one, one strip with the stuff that's already used. I mean, this stuff has been used, what, this is the third thing it's been on? Yeah, it looks like that's bare metal. It takes it right down if you leave it on there overnight. Give it a little scrape. Bring this stuff back in. Bring it back in on it. You can see, though, it just from... And I'll probably use that piece again to strip more of this frame. I'm going to kind of get this frame stripped on this thing, and then I'm going to paint sections of it. Uh, little by little and we'll do that in a separate video but I'm just showing you if you're interested about the orange strip from the other video uh, when I get to this bucket truck frame which those of you guys who don't know this is the single cab that that belongs on it came on it from the factory so those are your oval window guys that are just coming for the oval window you might want to get back and check out some of the build on this it's pretty crazy and then uh, we'll be doing other videos on this frame in the near future I do have a couple other things I have to do before this though. I kind of got pushed in here So it is going to be a little while. I might do one little video uh, It might just pop up here on just maybe painting the frame and then uh, painting part of the frame I'm not going to paint the whole thing at once Well, we'll get these rims painted here Coming up and we'll check that color. That's what we want to do next But I'm um, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and off camera I'll just go ahead and finish scraping that frame and we'll continue on
Well, somebody screwed up. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. That's not even, even in the inkling of the ballpark. I don't know. That's why I wanted to paint the rims before I got too far into it. Because if I had to make some changes, I think we gotta get a little closer. Look at that, bad. It's gotta be the worst match I've ever seen. Somebody just didn't, there's missing some black and some, a little bit of blue in there, it's missing. I can probably fix it if I get some other stuff. So we'll see what we can do. All right, so I got these in today from Tam Tabco. I'll show you this place. Tabco. USA made in the USA. That's one of the reasons I like them even if their shape isn't perfect um, I'd rather have stuff that's made in the USA if if it's available so uh, I did get these um, they are very ex inexpensive. I think these were like the two corner pieces were like $15 or something crazy like that for these I mean that's normal they have like other sheet metal there like for Ford Chevy's a whole bunch of other ones and I'll tell you what I like about them is they come these are coated with electro galvanized these are coated electro galvanized steel so if you notice they're kind of gray looking that's not painted that's actually a process that the metal has been through that um, gives it so that it won't rust as quickly so it's kind of cool. It's paintable. Um, they do have some oil on them, so they have to be cleaned. Um, and so it was 15 something. I don't know. It was really cheap for these. They seem to be shaped pretty well correctly. The thing that I didn't know, um, I ordered this piece, and I, now I don't need it. Um, it's a repair section, and this I think was like $15 or something crazy like that. And it, and nothing fits perfect as far as that goes you know if you think you're going to get patch panels that are going to be perfect if you notice there's a little tab on the end that goes like that you know that you trim off you trim off what you don't need and, I, and it's kind of cool if they give you the extra section because you might need you might be rusted out all the way to here or something like that i don't know if you can see that all the way to here you know and you want to bend around that other little band a little further so they give you some extra metal to do that um the corners all the clocker home stuff is kind of like this too well the corners are kind of rounded they're not really so you take your chisel and you put it in the vise and you redo the corners before you put it on you know these are normal things when you have patch panels you know, if you guys want to get the really perfect ones, see how that's rounded? It's kind of normal when you get these things from most places you get them from. Except for, the funny thing about Volkswagen people is they all think, oh, well, it should just fit right on perfectly. It's like, no, dude, it's metal work. You still got to do metal work. You still got to pound stuff. You still got to make it right. But what was cool, I was going to say, is it comes with this all the way down. See, the panel actually... If you look here, the actual original panel stops right here. So it stops right here. Okay, and I didn't know, I thought that they were going to just send out just this panel to here, but it has this repair section all the way down to here, so I didn't really need this one. So I ordered it anyway for 15 bucks or whatever it was. I don't know, it was 15 or $20 and cheap. Um, so now I can fix all that rust. So we'll open that up here pretty soon. Uh, but I just wanted to tell you guys about these in case you're looking. They don't have that many Volkswagen parts. I talked to the people and I was like, hey man, it'd be nice if you guys made more of this stuff. Well, some people want the correct gauge steel and everything. I'm like, hey, a lot of this bug stuff is total crap what we're getting right now. And your, I've gotten your panels before and they were better than some of the crap that we're getting from whatever Denmark or I don't know where it comes from it's really cheap steel they use and this stuff's I think is a little better because it's electric galvanized at least they went to that you know stage 
So anyway, cool, and it's made in the USA. Bit hard to film this stuff, but I'll show you guys what's happening here. Here's the situation. <laughs> Not just kidding. Um, you guys know who that is, right? No, anyway, uh, check this out. We just got a little bit of filler on here. I got a couple coats on here. It's not really that thick. It's just so gradual. I didn't. I can't put it on very thick, and then I touched it there. You thought it was dry, but um, yeah, I'm just working this long, and I got to get this needs to be sanded down a lot. It's really not, like I said, it's not that thick. It's just on this one here, I just went over what they had because they they did a pretty good job of pounding that out. And on those, uh, if you have a scratch in your metal, really long scratch like that, and you're just trying to push it back out and like try and get it really smooth metal finished, you are going to have some problems. It's going to stretch. It always does. Because when that thing's groove goes in there like that, it stretches the metal doing that so bringing it back it's going to be stretched so you're gonna to have to shrink it a lot you're probably on a smooth you know semi round you see if this is thin over here thick in the middle thin again this door is around this way and it's around that way so in order to get this to shrink down from from the scratch you, you know what you're gonna probably have to do is you want to use one of those shrinking discs or something like that Trying to heat shrink little areas on this, it's just going to be buckling all over the place. You'll end up with a worse situation than what you had here. So that's why you know they make those shrinking discs. I've never used one, but one of those would be really ideal if you're trying to metal finish this. And you know, honestly, I'm not going to go there. It's there's really no reason to on this. I'd spend a lot of time on there, and it's the results are going to be the same it's still going to have filler a little bit i'm not going to get it to 100 percent metal finish but if you were really wanting to do that that's how you would do that so those shrinking discs work well for something like that where it's a flat metal piece you could probably use one of those uh well your shrinking dolly too but on that flat of a surface it's not going to work very well. The, the shrinking dolly just not, it, it works really well on a rounded surface. So, like if you guys watch CT, uh, his next video coming up, he's got the Carmen Gio with all that bondo in there. When he gets all that off, you'll see it's a really wrinkly and something like that on a rounded surface. That's when that shrinking dolly and a shrinking hammer will really do wonders. Because you can hammer right on the dolly and get all those little ripples out of it, out of the metal. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are going to see if this video is going to go up before his or his is going to go up after mine. I don't know. He's working on it right now. So little sneak preview there. You guys are watching that. He's really working his butt off. He has no idea what he's doing. You, you got to know that, you know, I've, I've done this hundreds of times. I've done hundreds of cars. I can't even count all the cars I've done over the years and he's never done any restoration work he's never done he's never done it anything like that <laughs> if you guys knew more about him it's just that's just totally this so far out of his element you know <laughs> it's comedy it's great it's great to watch him though because he's just he's got the best attitude ever and he's working hard at it and He's going to get it. He's going to get it. It's going to take some coaching, but he'll get it. I know he's he's going to get it. He's very picky, so I know he's going to do a good job. Anyway, it'll be, it'll take a little while, but I'm hoping he get it done a little quicker than I even expect. He, he amazes me sometimes. <laughs> he actually gets things done better or faster than I thought. Some of the little assembly things he's done. Like assembling a fuel pump and getting it right one time, that was pretty good. That's pretty hard to do. So everybody thinks that stuff's all easy. That you know, it's not that easy. So anyway, we'll keep working. That's where I'm at now.
Alright, so check this out. We, these door bottoms didn't look that bad until I stripped the door. And then I saw inside here some rust hole in the inner panel. So I just cut it open to take a look at everything and kind of see what's going on. How heavy the surface rust is on the inside, which isn't that bad. But what I think I'm going to do is I cut out a little bit further and then just cut through one layer here because I need a little bit better metal. It's kind of better about right here, right where I'm at, but I just need a little bit further out. And make the inner panel first, then I'll just make an outer piece. And then there's a couple pinholes along here. So let's take a drill and open them up and look at them. All right, so again. It's, fairly, it's like fairly solid. I don't know if that's a. I don't know if that's another one right there. Maybe it is. Get the push on it. Yeah, it's just a skin. And then I got these ones here, so I'm gonna have to open these up. I don't see anything in the inner panel down here, I don't think. No, there's nothing on the inner panel on this one. So I'll just cut that. I don't want to cut. See, some people would say, oh, just replace the whole door bottom. And I'll tell you, you cut that whole door bottom off and try and butt weld a piece in there, it's going to warp like crazy unless you really take your time and just do one weld here one weld here one down there because it's almost flat and anytime you tap two flat pieces of metal and you don't have a lot of patience to sit there and weld 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 you know and this would take i mean most of a day probably to weld just to do the welding on that so it's better to do it in patches because if I do a small spot like this, I can control it a lot better than if I do a big long one. Because as soon as I do that, it's gonna, you'll see, once you cut through that, you'll see the metal just, doing, <laughs> it just springs. And then trying to get it to get back and then as soon as you get start getting it hot, it just does its own thing. So, and I think they make a repair section for this door. I mean, if they made one and it was a it was a, a lap piece, that would probably be easier. So if it went like here, and then it had a little stair step for the lap, what they call that a flange for the lap, then it might go down good. I mean, if you have to do the whole bottom of the door, it's what you gotta do. But if you don't have to, it's easier to do smaller sections. And here's the other door, it's got one. feels a little thicker. I don't know if somebody just drilled those holes. 
almost looks like maybe they did and they just like a little bit of rust around them so I think I can fix those Let's, let me drill them out and bring it back in yeah it looks pretty solid right to this point you can feel there's no rust on the inside but it is very thin metal it's like 22 or something so what I'll probably do since this is on the bottom of the door I'll probably just treat everything inside here and just put a piece on here and just tack weld laps in you know you can't see it any from anywhere so it's not going to matter and then just put a little filler on it be done simple repair clean up all this rust and I'll put um, treatment on everything and then grind it back off from there but overall this this uh, door skin the bottom door skin on this one looks pretty good there's not any rust on the inside you guys can get in there just a little tiny bit so I'll just actually just treat all that with show some treatment down in the cracks really good try and make sure that it doesn't come back and then paint everything inside I'll get my straw out and just paint the inside edge up in here and then that's the hardest thing to reach that's where the rust is so if, even if I have to I'll get a brush out I'll do whatever I have to do to make sure that this is coated really well and with um, I'll probably use my uh, the red oxide um, heavy rusted metal primer on that because it's it'll stick to anything and it'll also if I don't get it treated it'll keep it from rusting and it's also a good sealer so it doesn't work good for automotive paint but it works great for household paint so anyway I think that's what I'll do with that meanwhile we'll just go ahead and work on this here and see what happens
All right, got the epoxy primer on. Gotta shoot the other primer, it's getting dark. All right, well, there you go, guys. Got the doors all fixed up. Yeah, I got these edges looking pretty good. This corner looks pretty good. This is the one that was bad, I think. I think this is the one. Yeah, this is this one. And then this one had a big dent here. And I don't know. I, I warped it a little bit on that one when I welded it. I just hammered it straight. Came out pretty good. Almost had it pretty straight without any filler. And then put a little bit of filler on it wasn't that bad so uh, yeah these doors look good now the what I was gonna say is if you guys haven't noticed these rib doors really have a different shape it's more rounded here than your old than your late model doors the Volkswagen people look here let's see if we can see on this one did you guys see that deep how deep that is it's a lot deeper than the other doors in the later models, even in the 60s or 50s. Um, they had the different style doors at that point. So these ribbed ones, they have the ribs on the inside, which I can't show you right now. But, you know, I got this really dry because I kind of pushed drying time a little bit on the, uh, should have let the epoxy dry a good solid hour before I put the other on. You want it to the point where it's dry, but it's just barely sticky and on the surface. And then uh, you can go right over it without sanding. That's the trick of epoxy primer. That's really the way it's designed. It's designed as an undercoat. You know, so. Anyway, we got some progress here, it looks like. Uh, we'll be doing some other videos coming up as soon as I get a little bit further along I'm not sure where I'm gonna stop I'm gonna have to stop pretty soon on this car um, there's gonna be some other project coming and then I'm just gonna come back into this later one thing that's ongoing is the Carmen Ghia project that's gonna be it depends on Dale's time he's got other stuff he's trying to get an engine rebuild type 4 he's doing and gotta get that in the van and get it running then he's gonna be over here doing stuff and we'll get progress video on that stacked up on one of the editors and then I'm gonna work on that and then I'll have this thing going on and then I do have to I'm gonna do probably something on the bucket truck here coming up and then I will be doing uh, I'm gonna pull this thing out and I'm gonna have to start on that rabbit and get it done it, it's only just a few days um, to get it ready for paint, get it done, got to put a timing belt on it. So probably about a week's worth of work there, and then I'll get back into these again. So that's going to be something a little different. And we'll get that that rabbit painted, get it ready, get it looking nice, and get it running good the way it should. Got to get a timing belt on. The timing belt's really old. It's on there. I don't want to drive it and then have it break the timing belt. So anyway. All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. See your comments. And if I don't talk to you before Thanksgiving, have a good Thanksgiving. Talk to you then.